in our journey towards understanding the democracy especially when we started it in the grade 9 that is in the previous year we tried to understand what are the factors that provoked the people to turn towards democracy like dictatorship versus democracy once we understood clearly that dictators cannot be further accepted because in the modern days we need to understand that everything whatever it happens it is for the benefit of the people so today the governments should run with the guiding principle of responsible and uh, taking care governments or who tries to do best for the people that is the reason why they are also known as representative governments so when we talk about responsible representative responsible governments are, means what responsible for whom responsible for people representative whose representatives are these people here also the same these people are the representatives of the people so when we talk about the representative governments when you talk about the dictatorship governments there is slight variation here dictatorship is something which the leader wants to do uh, democratic governments is something which the people would like to have on their side it's very clear so the leaders are elected by the people the leaders will be given the choice to rule only with the consent of the people so the underlying power factor for democracy is the consent or the approval of the people the consent or the approval of the people so these all things are the basic factors what we have decided and then we already have uh, clearly stated that we need certain specifications we would like to understand clearly what the political parties do how the election procedure works how is the time period bound for elections why is it mandatory to conduct elections after a fixed period of time and how do the, really the people exercise their political rights after discussing all these things we would be able to understand the two basic factors of democracy are political parties the other one is the elections so neither political parties nor elections any one is absent obviously it would lead to the destruction of democracy either the elections or the political parties are delayed but there is democracy but in case neither the political parties are there nor you have elections then you completely understand that there are no democratic structure existing in that particular country we have also seen various struggles which are faced by the people if you remember we analyzed clearly how did uh, the differentiation of people the communities the culture has been accommodated in belgium whereas it was not accommodated in sri lanka which led to the civil war so after having a thorough understanding on all these basic facts now we can come to a conclusion that democracy still needs to improve as we discussed earlier democracy itself when we understand about the democracy first of all the challenge of democracy is to turn towards democratic structure from the monarchic style from the aristocracy you turn out towards democracy that is a fundamental challenge or the basic challenge and once you turn into democracy again you need to get some more challenge to be over crossed as the time passes on the tests for democracy do not get end why they do not get end because the way you understand the democracy is a continuous process it is an evolving process you can't say this is the end of democracy the democracy goes on evolving as the time passes on so when the time passes on a new challenges come up new tasks come up so depending on the tasks depending on the challenges you need to understand yourself 
what is actually happening and how you need to circulate them and how you need to accommodate them in the examples of this belgium or in sri lanka we have understood clearly when you are able to accommodate them you can successfully have a democratic structure when you are not able to accommodate them and when you go for taking silence of any one group of people obviously it would leads to some destruction in the society now coming to the point of conclusion like when we come to redefining democracy why do we need to redefine democracy what are the factors that led us to think on the redefining of democracy when we talk about the democracy first point is the major concern rulers should have full authority to take decisions when i say ruler should have full authority to take decisions because most of the times the political parties are controlled by the big corporate groups which are funding them whenever they need it so this kind of attitude this kind of the behavior which is in the present day society has to be stopped the rulers means the people whom the uh, real public has trusted on them and voted in the favor of them in order to get them into power and give a free hand for them to rule the system govern the government but in actual reality the things are not going in that way they are sidelined they are not being followed in the similar manner so these kind of things has to be arrested severely these things should not happen this should be questioned strictly because the rulers or the people who have trusted the rulers and voted in the favor of them expecting that they would be good and benefiting them on a larger scale but the point is when the people have trusted somebody and these people are working for the big corporate tycoons would obviously result in the destruction of the common man's life so this has to be checked severely the second major fundamental thing what we can understand is that through elections the people should be given free and fair choice 